Hello, I am Michelle Himes McCrory and I am from Stillwater, Oklahoma. I am currently one of the artists in 24 Works on Paper by Oklahoma Visual Arts Coalition. This biennial is the only traveling art exhibition by living Oklahoma artists. It helps to connect communities together across the entire state of Oklahoma and I am so happy to be a part of it. I am a mixed media artist and I have been working in printmaking for over 20 years. Printmaking is an art form that involves making designs or images by printing them with ink. There are so many different types of printmaking and there's always something new to learn and try. Uh, I love the entire creative process, but one of my favorite things about it is that instead of only creating one work of art, it allows you to print in multiples. That way you can have some available for purchase, you could gift them to friends and family, and it is also a great way to connect with other artists through collaborations or through print trades. One of the best ways to find inspiration in your own art is by choosing a subject matter that you are interested in or that you are connected to. Finding these connections in your work creates a link between you and your art and how it relates to you personally. In my own artwork, I like to include things that remind me of my family. My great-grandparents were Anna Rosetta and Frank Eaton, who's also known as Pistol Pete. He was the inspiration for the mascot at Oklahoma State University. Their home in Perkins was restored with help from the Oklahoma Historical Society and is available for viewing and tours by the public. My great grandma had a bird room in their home that was full of plants and lots of canaries. Because of this, I like to include birds in my own artwork as just another way to help bring a connection with me and my family. There are so many talented Oklahoma artists, and one of them is Mark Sisson. Mark is an artist and art professor at Oklahoma State University in Stillwater, where he teaches drawing and printmaking courses. His artwork is often political, sometimes with a humorous twist, and it is always executed with masterful precision. Mark is also one of the current artists in OVAC's 24 Works on Paper. His lithograph and relief print also received the Award of Merit by curator Heather Autone. Another amazing Oklahoma artist is Catherine Leontis Warren. Catherine is an artist and art professor at Cameron University in Lawton, where she teaches drawing, watercolor, and printmaking courses. In one of her most recent bodies of work, she creates large-scale relief prints that are breathtaking. They have very intricate mark making and they reflect upon passages, time, and motion. Catherine gifted me this beautiful print a few years ago that I absolutely adore. And it's just another way that art can connect people as well. Relief printmaking is an art form where an image is printed by a raised section of the block. Uh, a lot of traditional printmaking is made on large printing presses. I want to show you a technique that you can do in the classroom or on your own at home by creating and hand printing your own stamps. A lot of times when people think of stamps, you might think of the pre-made things that you purchase at a craft store. But the great thing about creating your own is that you are in charge of the entire design process from start to finish. So my grandma Elizabeth always said there is nothing to it but to do it. So let's get started on making your own stamps. So the first step is going to be drawing your image. Now this could be working out of your sketchbook or it can be just off of a plain sheet of paper. 
Um, you want to start with something that is a pencil drawing. It can also be marker. You can make this as detailed as you want. So you take your drawing image and then you get a sheet of tracing paper and you want to cut this down to your block size. What we are using for the block is going to be Speedball Speedy Carve. This is in a three by four inch size. There are also larger sizes that are available that you can cut down if you want. Um, but for the vast majority of this, we're gonna be working on this smaller size. I'm gonna be showing you several blocks on here, but this is just so you can see the entire process from start to finish. So I have cut down the tracing paper to the size of block. You just want to put this over your drawing. You want to get a soft pencil. I'm using a 2B. This can be any brand pencil. And then just start tracing over your image. You want to make sure that you get this nice and dark. And then just start tracing around the outline of whatever art that you want. If you decide that you want to change it from the original drawing a bit, now is the time to make any of those edits or changes in the original artwork. Once you have something down and you are ready to transfer, then there are a few different options. You can use a burnishing tool like I have here. You can also use the back of a wooden spoon or a metal spoon that you have at your house. So you take this tracing paper, you want to get pencil side down, and then you flip it over on top of your block, like so. Now, you just wanna have a even pressure across the entire block and then this is where you start the burnishing. Burnishing is just another word for polishing. So you want to go across the entire image and then make sure you don't lift up your tracing paper before you have double checked to see that it has transferred well. So I am going to hold on to it. I'm just gonna lift up the corner and then check. I think this looks good so I can go ahead and remove the entire tracing paper. So now that I've removed it, you can see the image that is on the block. This is going to be a mirror image from what you have drawn. That is something that's really important to keep in mind with printmaking. Whatever you have on the block is always gonna print with the mirror image. So now that I have my artwork on here, it is time to begin carving. So we're going to take a Speedball Lino Cut number one set. This has five nibs and then they are interchangeable with the tip of the carving tool. So I am going to start with the smallest nib on here. This is a number one. You can also call it a gouge instead of nib. So this is the smallest carving gouge on here. So you wanna begin with carving out the entire outline of your art image. So with this, I am going to hold it with one hand and then I'm gonna keep it steady with my opposite hand. And remember that safety first with this, you always wanna carve away from you, never towards you. So you want to take your carving tool and hold it at about a 30 degree angle. So if you start with a 90 degree and then you tilt it back on here, you never really wanna have it higher than that. So at a 30 degree angle, you start your carving and then just start slowly working around the object. You wanna make sure you always go very slow, very steady. You wanna carve shallow to deep as you go. You can keep turning the block as you're going. 
to make sure you keep the tool carving away from you. Now I'm just going over the entire outline of the image. And then just remove the excess as you go. I'm just going to keep rotating this block all the way around. And that is the first step for this. Now you want to get into the more detailed areas. And to do this, you need to decide if you want to have a positive image or a negative image. So a negative image is going to be areas where the space carved out, the ink is going to not stick to those areas. The positive image is going to be parts of the surface is going to remain uncarved and will receive the ink on here. So I'll put out an example of this negative image. I am going to keep using the number one nib on this for the speedball cutter. And I'm going to start carving the outside areas. So you want to continue using your number one gouge on here. This is the smallest nib that's in your set and keep working around the outline of this. With the negative carved stamp, this is going to allow you to have the most detail in the stamp since you are still adding the tiny little lines. You're not carving quite as much out. So I typically take my other hand and then rest it against the carving tool. This helps work it around the space a little bit more. Make sure that when you're cutting that you are carving this shallow to deep. You always want to start with a light pressure and then you can always carve more later. With this block, I have taken the ink pad and completely covered the entire surface first and then let it dry for a while. That way you can really see the contrast on here. So I have been working on the negative image for the stamp. Now we're going to switch over and then practice on carving a positive image for this. So the positive image is going to be instead of carving through the lines, we're going to carve around the lines of the image. So for this, again, using the smallest nib to start and we're going to start not only with the outline of the bird, but then we're also going to come back in and then carve inside the line as well. I went ahead and outlined everything with the Sharpie to begin with, and I went ahead and made it a little bit thicker than you would think you need because if you accidentally carve through this outside line, there's no way to get those pieces of the block back. So you wanna make sure that you are giving yourself enough space with that outside line that it's gonna show up well with your stamp. Once you have the entire outside completely carved in, then start jumping to the interior of the object with either the number one or you can jump up to the higher nib at this point. 
So I am using the number two nib right now and I am going to start removing larger areas of the block. So you can see that the positive image definitely takes longer to carve. There are larger areas to remove of the block and it definitely gives you different results. So whenever you're making your own stamp, you can play around with it and figure out what is gonna be the best for your own image. Once you have the entire outside and inside of your image carved out, you want to get the bigger nib on here and then start carving away larger sections of the stamp. So I'm going to get the number three nib and then just start removing larger sections of the outside of the stamp. Keep in mind you still want to have that 30 degree angle and then make sure you're going very slow. You want to be very careful of the outside area of your image at this point because if you accidentally cut through this then you can't go back in and add it. So I always say when in doubt leave it out because you can always do a test print and if you decide you want to carve more later you can come back in and then add some more of the detail areas. You want to make sure that you get a wide enough area on here so if you want to take your craft knife and then cut the excess areas on here that you have removed enough of the surface so you don't have to cut so deep through. I'm using the number three nib but you can always jump to the larger number five nib if you want. So once you have the larger areas carved out, now you can take your craft knife and start carving out bigger outside sections on here. I'm using an X-Acto knife, but you can use any craft knife for this purpose. Just remember, if you do decide to carve out any of the outside sections with a craft knife, that you always have a proper cutting surface on here. I have a self-healing mat that I am using. Uh, you can also take the back of a um, sketchbook and then use that as well. So this is very sharp. You wanna make sure that you are keeping your fingers far away. I have a good amount of the surface carved away already. So I'm going to just start cutting out the very outside line of my stamp, carving away sections as I go. Cut very slow so your knife isn't slipping. You just want to start carving out larger chunks, removing them section at a time. If you have a corner on here, you can even cut just straight down, kind of like you're cutting a piece of cheese. Until you have your carved out stamp and then you can start coming back in with a knife and then just start trimming areas. Keep in mind, anything with a raised surface is going to print. So at this point, you can do a test print and then see if you need to come back in and then carve out any other areas. 
So once you have your stamps carved out, then it's just a matter of finding the paper that you want to use and figuring out which type of ink is going to work best for you. So I have two stamps ready to go on here. I have one that is a negative image stamp. I have one that is a positive image stamp. So the inks that we're using for this project are dye inks and pigment inks. The dye ink is Ranger Archival ink. It is in jet black. It is acid-free, permanent, and waterproof. Now, dye inks have different properties than pigment inks. The dye inks are fast drying, they are a little bit thinner, and they're also more transparent. Um, this felt pad um, is a little bit firmer, and it does help pick up really good details in your stamp. The second option that we have are VersaFine Claire. These are pigment inks, and they're also acid-free, they're permanent, um, they're water resistant. They are a little bit thicker, and they are slow to dry, so you wanna take a little bit more time with letting these dry as opposed to the dye inks. They are more opaque, and the stamp pad is foam-based on this one. Since it's a little bit softer, you wanna make sure that you apply a little bit lighter pressure whenever you're printing on this. So I've got a plain scrap piece of paper that I'm going to begin the printing process. I'm going to start with my stamp out. I'm going to get some dye ink to begin with. And if it's a smaller stamp, then I typically take it and apply it right to the stamp pad. If it's a larger stamp, then I will put the stamp on the surface and then take the stamp pad and actually apply it right down onto it. You wanna apply even pressure going all the way across, making sure that you are completely coating the surface with the ink. Now you are ready to print. So let's talk about some paper choices on here. So we have two types of printmaking paper that we are working with today. The first is Richardson printmaking paper. This is a um, low tooth paper. So if you hear the word tooth, it refers to the paper's texture. Whenever you're printing with stamps, it's always good to have a smooth texture or a low tooth that helps pick up most of the details in this. So the second one is a Canson Bristol paper. This is also smooth. It is acid-free. If you ever hear acid-free, it refers to your paper being a neutral pH level. You always wanna look for archival or acid-free in your inks and your paper. That means that your artwork is going to last a long time and it is not gonna yellow as much as it ages. So we're taking the stamp. We've got the archival ink that we're starting with. We've inked the entire surface. You wanna go ahead and do a couple practice prints as you go. You're building up the surface. Then I'm going to just get a scratch piece of paper to begin and then just do a little test print. So we flipped it over. You wanna apply even pressure across the entire stamp and then do not lift it up until you are sure that all of the ink is down. So even pressure and then see what your test print is. You never wanna start and then jump into your nice paper for that very first print. You wanna make sure that you test each time. This is a good time to look and see if you've missed any details as you were carving. If you see any spots where it's picking up ink that you didn't think it was gonna pick up ink, then this is a good time to come back in and then get your speedball carving tool again and then carve out any sections that you feel like you have missed. 
If it looks good, then keep printing. So we're gonna come back in with the same Ranger ink. We're going to stamp back over the entire surface with even pressure as you go. The reason why I like to have the stamp on the table is because then you can start seeing where you've missed any sections of ink. Once you are ready, then you can get your nicer paper on here, flip it over, even pressure again. And then you've got your stamp. So I am going to jump over to the different kind of ink right now, and that is the pigment ink. So this is going to be Versifying Clair ink, and it is a little bit different for the printing process because instead of that felt pad, it is a foam based. So it will stick to the stamp a little bit more. It coats it really well. And then we're gonna practice next on the Canson paper. So before I jump over to the nicer paper, I'm gonna do another test print on our scrap paper. Let's see how the result is. Then back over with the ink pad, adding a second pass of ink. Now we're going to jump over to the Canson paper. Even pressure again. And great results for both of these. I think that there is things with the um, dye inks on here that work really well. And then as far as the Bristol paper, it is very smooth. So we have printed the positive image and now I'm going to practice printing the negative. So I've got my practice paper on here. I'm gonna see how the image looks and then go ahead and print it on the nicer paper. So you can see the difference in positive versus negative and decide what's gonna work best for you for your image. I hope you have enjoyed learning this relief printing process. Now you can try stamping on your own. You can experiment with different textures of paper and see which kind of ink is going to work best for you, whether it is dye based versus pigment based. Thank you for watching and happy stamping.